Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut tutorial, you are going to learn how to clean and maintain your Brother Scan and Cut machine. And that includes the machine itself, the scanning plate, the blade holder, the blade, the mats, and even how to align your machines. So let's get started and I will explain how I came about with this top, you know, how this topic came about as I get going. All right, I have here a CM350, it's a scan and cut two, and behind it is an SDX125. This should cover pretty much all the models out there because Brother made two series. You either have a CM model or you have a SDX model. And there's lots of different model numbers, but these, th these will cover how to, how to do it. And I'm gonna explain, I have lots of materials I'm using for cleaning. I'll show them to you as we go, and then there'll be a full list of cleaning materials in the description because I'm going to use more than just what I show you here, you know, in my daily life. But right now I'm going to show you the basics. So let's talk about the machine itself. For this, we're going to need alcohol-free baby wipes, Windex wipes, or just Windex and some paper towels, and what's called a magic eraser. Okay, so let's clean the machine and the scanning plate. I have a brother scan and cut user group. And in that user group, I asked, and anyone is free to join that user group on Facebook, where we share projects you create in my courses, or you ask questions, and other, other users help you help answer questions for me, which is awesome. Well, I asked in that group, I said, what topics would you like me to cover in my next video next week? And I had, I'm gonna give a shout out to a few of the questions I had, and I, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of comments and questions and suggestions, and I couldn't do them all. So, but, but Nancy Jo asked about, she asked about conditioning a mat, storing a mat. Okay, she asked about mat maintenance. Okay, so that was Nancy Jo. And then Barbara, Barbara asked about cleaning the machine and the scanning plate. Okay, and then Susan asked about adjusting the blade. And so this, that's how this kind of video came about, the troubleshooting video based on their questions. So I figured, let me just do a troubleshooting video. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using a baby wipe on the machine itself. Now you have these little black marks that you end up with, sometimes right here. See how this is all gritty? It's like gritty, it has like adhesive. So they're sort of black or gray marks. To get those off, you need your magic eraser. I don't put water on my magic eraser. I just simply rub. You hear that squeaky noise? And see how it's coming up black? That stuff will come off if you rub enough with your magic eraser. Always unplug your machine first and, you know, so you don't get hurt. And I do not represent brother. Just so you know, <laughs> this is how Kim Smith cleans her machine, the paper chip. This is how I do it. This isn't necessarily how they recommend it. This is what I do. Okay, so I'm just helping out my viewers, Nancy, Joe, Susan, Barbara, and anyone else interested on how to clean and maintain your machine. Okay, that's it. We did the outside of the machine. Now, what I like to do also is shake it. Shake it up, baby, right? Get rid of any dust. I'd, shake, I'd shaken it recently. Before I do the next part, I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm going to take off the bottom and clean the scanning plate. So now we're not using the baby wipes anymore. We're gonna use the Windex wipes because the scanning plate is glass. So you use Windex and notice how it says let me take one of these out. It says streak free. You don't want streaks on your glass, right? This is what you're scanning with. You also, if you ever have like tape stuck in your machine because you're using my painter's tape trick and you're like, why is there a big line of tape stuck in my machine? Well, it's because, oops, sorry, just dropped my machine. That's not the first time I've dropped my machine. Anyway, we're gonna open this up, the bottom. But if you ever wonder why you have like a big line on your machine, do you notice how I did that? I just went like this. I just squeezed the handle and pull it off. That's it. That's how to get this off. We are using a Windex wipe to get in there. This is where tape would be stuck. If you ever have tape stuck in your machine, it, you might have to get it off the scanning plate. Just take the bottom off. It's very, very simple. Don't worry if you're like, oh, the scanning plate moves. Listen to this. Don't worry. It's supposed to move. That's how your mat goes in and out and it doesn't get stuck. And, but notice where the light from the scanner is coming out. You definitely want to keep this clean because this is what, this is how things are getting recognized on your mat. 
This is the glass that the light is coming through to scan your image. All right, so I, of course, am not gonna put the lid back on right now because I don't wanna, I wanna let that dry. But you can use your magic eraser for this part. You can even use your Windex wipe, but I like to use my magic eraser because usually there's adhesive stuck on here. Yeah, in fact, I, I did clean this recently, but I can still see some adhesive. And magic eraser is how to get adhesive off. And if, I, if you have adhesive stuck to your craft room floor, that's how to get it off as well. Okay, so you could use, like I said, you could use your Windex as well. Okay, so we're on the, we're on the machine. We're doing the machine still. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna put this back later. I'm gonna show you how to clean the SDX 125. And of course, this is again, something that I unplugged before I cleaned it, right? Unplug it, get your alcohol-free baby wipes. They say alcohol-free on the, on the container, you know, on the package. There was a little rubber piece here too that fell off. And you might be thinking, it's because how you manhandle your machine. Well, you know what? I do use my machines a lot. And I do use them more than most. So maybe, maybe you're right, but it just fell off. I mean, I tried gluing it back together and you know, no luck there. Okay, so I'm cleaning the outside of the machine, open it up. I shake it out, shake out the dust. There's any dust in there. And again, I'm using baby wipe here and then I'm using, then I'm gonna take my magic eraser and I'm gonna get rid of the adhesive on there and the black streaks. I can see a black streak right there. Try not to, they say to put a little bit of water on these magic erasers, but I don't use water on my magic erasers. Hear that noise squeaky? I like to use it as a sort of a dry rub because it gets, that's how I get my adhesive off. I see some adhesive stuck in there. All right, but you get the point. And that's how you get rid of your adhesive, use a magic eraser. All right, let's turn this over, the SDX 125, and let's get rid of, oh, by the way, let me show you one thing before I turn it all the way over, because I have to turn it the other way anyway. There is a lever on the side of your machine, over here. When you're, when you're scanning and cutting thick materials with your SDX machine, this doesn't have it in the CM model, you have to raise your lever. So if you're, if you're ever cutting like something thick, it's gonna say raise it to lever two and that's where you do that, okay? So this, this scan, scanning cut, the scanning plate, I mean, it actually, I'm gonna turn that over. It actually works a little bit better in that it, it cuts thicker materials because it lifts up, it, it's a little bit more flexible. All right, so here's how we get this one off. I'm gonna use this little lever here. I'm on the SDX model. I'm gonna use this lever here. And first I'm gonna pull out this tray. So you gotta pull out the tray. So lift this up and pull out the tray. And get lift it again and pull until the tray sort of comes all the way out. Just keep holding it and wiggle, wiggle. Again, don't blame me if your machine breaks for manhandling it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to manhandle mine too much. So what I'm doing is I'm going under here. I'm just, do you see how I did that? There were these little handles. So I have, you have to hold this and you might need some help. Like I had to get help one time doing this the first time from my husband. See, watch. When you, first, I'm lifting up this to get rid of the tray. So, see, I'm lifting up this handle, and then I'm pushing on these little, see these little? There, if you kind of squeeze it with your hand. There. Okay? The paper chef is not responsible for broken trays. So here's our scanning plate. That's there, look at this. See that? That It moves a lot more than the, S, the CM models because it, it's very flexible because it does thicker materials. And that's where the light comes out and shines through this glass. So of course you need to clean, clean the glass plate. And I'm gonna turn that, I'm gonna grab my Windex wipe. Okay, Windex wipe, and we're gonna do the plate. Okay. Pretty good. And let's put this all back together later. I'm just cleaning the bottom while I'm at it. And of course, you can clean while you got your tray out. I mean, look how dirty my tray is. You can clean that with your magic eraser. See all that adhesive that got stuck in my tray? And you clean, you know, clean both sides of this while you have it out. If you need to go do it in the sink and soak it, that's fine too, okay? But I'm just you know, showing you the overview here. All right, let these dry. I'm gonna turn these over. And what I wanna do now is take out, I'm gonna go ahead and take out both of my blades, my blade holders, I mean. I'm gonna take out the auto blade. This is auto blade from the SDX. And I'm gonna take out my 
CM350. I'm going to go ahead and take out, just so you can see how I'm doing that. I'm lifting up the blade holder. I know it's sideways, but my crafty friends have seen me do this lots of times. And I have videos just on maintaining blade, a whole video just on that. But I'm just doing a quicker overview now for my, to help my crafty friends in the Scan and Cut user group because most of the questions focused around maintenance. And so I just thought, why not do a video about maintenance, troubleshooting, spring cleaning? All right, so now we have our blade holders. Okay, this is the S CM model, CM350, CM350, SDX. It doesn't matter. You're going to do the same thing for each kind of blade. So let's take our materials that we need. We're going to get our materials. We're going to take out Q-tips. So you need Q-tips for this part. Let's take out a couple Q-tips. And you need a ball of aluminum foil. Okay, so I'm just using Reynolds wrap, aluminum foil. Okay, so this is what I do. Again, what Paper Chef does, Kim Smith, not what brother recommends. I always have to keep saying that. Sorry, I have to keep saying that. But anyway, there we go. So there are our blades. I zoomed in. So now let's put this back. We'll just put this magic eraser down so we have something to, to see, some contrast there. So we're going to open up our blade holder. Now, if your blade ever gets stuck, if your blade ever gets jammed and it's not cutting, it could be that your springs are stuck. So leave your springs where they're at, but go like this sometimes. Just sort of go like that. If, you ever, if your springs are ever stuck, maybe they're jammed up in there. I've had this happen. They're jammed up like that. They should be stretched out to the whole thing. So I don't, you don't need to pull your springs out right now. Just, just go like that, okay? Now, the blade, how it comes out. So let's talk about that. The blade is just going to come out, like just by me. Now, don't poke yourself. Just go like that. Just sort of pull it. See, it's magnetic. So when I pull it and let go, it kind of wants to pop back in. I'm just going to pull out the blade. Now I'm doing this one at a time because I don't want to mix up this blade with, with the other blade or anything, right? So I'm just pulling out the blade. Now here's, we got, we got our blade holder and why would it get dirty in the blade holder? Well, if you're cutting fibrous papers, maybe you're cutting fibrous papers or maybe you're cutting glitter paper. And I know at Christmas time, I had all kinds of glitter stuck in here. So you can put alcohol on your, if you want on your Q-tip, but I'm just going like that, getting all the dirt out. So do that, maybe a little bit of water, a little bit of alcohol. Clean out your blade holder, <laughs> tap, tap, maybe go like that. You'll actually see glitter come out when you do that, you know. Now we want to sharpen our blade. So we're going to put that in there so we don't lose it. We're going to take our, we're going to take our foil and we're going to make it into a ball. Just fold it, fold it, fold it, put it into a ball. All right, put it down. Now, let's try to hold the foil still. Let's try to do that. Let's try to hold the foil like that. But don't, so you want, you, know, you make sure, this is what you don't want to do, crafty friends. You don't want to do this. Okay, you don't want to do this. You don't want to hold the foil in your hand when you're sharpening. You want to put the foil down and you can hold it with your hands, but don't hold it up in the air because you could, you could end up poking all the way through it into your hand. So I put the foil down onto the table and I'm just going to take the blade and I'm just sharpening it. How many times? Maybe 10, 20 different spots. Don't poke yourself. Okay. And that's it. Now your, now your blade is sharpened. Incidentally, this is how I sharpen. I put foil into all my trimmers and my paper trimmers and everything. And that's how I sharpen them. I do this like probably every day, at least every day. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest. Maybe, maybe every other day I sharpen my blade. Okay, it keeps me from having to hardly ever buy new blades. But of course, you know, if you want to buy new blades, it'll be in the description. You can support my channel by using my links. All right, there you go. So now I'm just putting that back in. You saw how it went back in. And I'm just going to screw the cap back on. Later, we'll do a scanning cutting position adjustment. So I'm going to go up to 12. And what are we using later? Whisper white. So whisper white. I can go back down to a four okay so that's really that's all set for later now let's do our auto blade okay auto blade stx machine unscrew it okay look in there tap 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 get rid of any dust oh look how much stuff is stuck on that blade i need to show this in close-up crafty friends because my blade is so dirty and now this is why it wasn't cutting well see that see how dirty my blade is look at that there's like adhesive stuck on it you can see that I didn't even know how dirty it was. 
but I just know it wasn't cutting very well. So I'm going to pull out that blade. Okay. Again, just pull it out. Now, and I'm going to, you know, just lay that there for a minute. And we're going to do the inside. We're going to clean the inside holder. So get the other Q-tip. Here's a Q-tip I haven't used yet. And we're going to clean in there. Wow, look how dirty the inside of that is. I haven't done this one in a while. Sometimes I just get mad at my machine and like, and, and I say you're grounded. And that's kind of what this one was grounded. So <laughs> it wasn't coming out to play, but that's why it was not, it was not its fault. It just needed to be cleaned and maintained spring cleaning time. This is, if you have time, this is when you need to do this. Well, actually do it often. Don't wait as long as I did. Okay, clean the inside of it with the Q-tip. Now taking out the blade. Now by, by the, when you poke, the act of poking this blade, you could wipe it off first if you want, but just by poking it into the foil, you're gonna clean whatever was on it off. Okay, so put it down. Don't, don't hold it up in the air like I, okay. So I don't see anything on there anymore. Again, don't cut yourself. I'm just checking for the, uh, any debris still on the blade. So turn the foil around. Okay, now you can use this foil like a hundred times. I mean, it'll keep on sharpening your blades for a while. So just keep your ball of foil around. Put it in the tray if you want. You have a little, these have a little bit of storage area. And put the foil in your tray. Let's see if there's anything stuck in there. Nope. I'm going to put the blade back in its holder. And all you do is drop it in there. Drop it in, it'll just suck right in because it's magnetic. Well, it should suck right in. It's not really, huh? There it goes. It's sucked in. Again, do the spring action. You're not going to, don't pull off your spring unless you need to in case it's jammed. But I just kind of check my springs. And it's all looking good. And I'm going to screw this back on. Now this one you just screw back on. There's no, there's no blade depth because it's an auto blade. Okay, so there, we, that's how we have it. Let's show you how to put those back in. Then we're going to put our trays back on the bottom. All right, here we go. We can't accidentally put the wrong one in the wrong machine because they won't fit. So we're going to go like this. Okay, we're going to, let me show you, maybe the view of my camera. So let's turn this. That's why I'm glad they're not plugged in, these machines, because I wouldn't be able to stretch them as far as I need to. Okay, so this is my SDX machine. My blade holder is open, and I'm going to put the auto blade back in. Okay, and we're going to shut it. We're going to close this. This is my CM. This is my CM machine. I'm going to Open it up, blade holder's open, stick it in there, push down, close it, shut it. Okay, done. Now let's put the bottoms back on. We're going to turn this over. Oh, when you turn over your machine, always kind of put down your, your little viewer there, your screen. Put down your screen. Let's turn it over. Now you're wondering, how do you put this back on? How do you put this tray holder back, this tray cover back on? Okay, so we're going to... There are little holes in it. Here's how you see. So even if I have it facing a different direction than before, it doesn't really matter because these little holes, see these two holes, you just put those in there like that. So you put those down in there and they go straight under, see? Don't break it, don't force it. You didn't see how I didn't force it. And you push and you click, click. One more time, crafty friends. There, we're putting the holder, click, okay? That's it. Now, that one's done. Now let's do this machine. Then we're gonna get to our mats. Okay, I have to turn it the other way. Okay, so I have, there's, there's my holder and I, I should, I have to make sure it's all clean. It should be clean. It is cleaned. I do have a little piece there I should probably clean before I shove it back in there. A little bit of black stuff on there. All right, so let's say this whole tray is cleaned and you want to turn it this way, see? You want to tr turn it so you can see these little, these little like marks from the manufacturer. And you want to just put it, well, if you can see that, crafty friends, make sure you can see that. If I can zoom back out, there we go. Zoom back out. So you're putting it in just like that. It'll all snap into place. Okay, don't force anything and you just push it like this. Hear that snap? That's how you cover your scanning plate. 
and your tray, which I hardly ever use. This is just to catch your, your mat. This is like, I, you know, I don't use that that much in the back. That's your tray. If you have a small table, it helps keep things from falling off your table. All right, now I'm gonna push these off to the side to make room for the mats. I said I would show you something about the mats next. All right, I get asked a lot, how do I store my mats and how do I, actually, let me just, I'm just gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this and make some more room on my table and talk about mats in a little bit more detail. So we'll see you in a minute after I get some room. Okay, crafty friends, I've cleared some room and I wanna talk about resticking the mats. But I was also asked about how I store mats and how, and other things about mats and how I repair mats. Okay, so how I store mats, I store them flat. That's a personal preference. What we're doing is, I'm just checking. This one is already restuck. Listen to that noise. And this one is not restuck. Okay, so I've already retacked that mat. We're gonna retack this mat, just a little bit, not the whole thing, just to give you an idea. All right, so I'm taking out some supplies as I'm talking to you. All right, so they asked about how I store mats, and I just said I just lay them down and I store them flat. That's how I personally store my mats. I put my dust covers back on them when I'm done storing, you know, when I'm done with them to keep them from sticking together. This is how I store them. I put the dust cover on them like that and I put them in a big old pile on top of each other. I'll put that one on top of this one and so forth. And I put them on the shelf. I store them flat. But in, in my Scan and Cut user group, they, they got into a conversation about it and even shared some pictures. So that was pretty neat. And so I just wanted to give a shout out, you know, for, for, for you know, sharing tips and tricks about how to store your mat. And that was Lindell. She stored, I mean, she stores them in a metal cabinet because you can hang the mats. See, there's this little hole here and you can hang the mat and you can hang the dust cover on it. So she, she hangs them and stores them inside a metal cabinet or maybe on the outside of the cabinet, but I think inside. And she showed a picture of that. These being stored in a cabinet vertically. Okay, so thanks Lindell. And then Evie jumped in and said she also hangs hers up. Okay, so you can either hang them or you can leave them flat. Of course, if you have, an, if you have a this kind of mat, meaning um, for the CM model, they don't come with a hole in it. I'm not gonna tell you to poke a hole in it. Don't poke a hole in it. But I'm saying for the SGX models, you can hang your mats. It's not poke holes and things we don't need to. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just gonna explain how I got here. As I'm, as I'm gonna restick my mat a little bit. I'm gonna add some water to this little tray. It's a little hot dog tray. And I'm going to use my two-way glue to restick the mat with. And you can also use some tape. And I've done two full videos on, maybe even three videos on how to restick mats. I even have lots of hacks. There's even mats that you can buy without adhesive on them already. I mean, there's so many things you can do. But just to kind of give you a quick idea, just kind of put some tape there. Okay, put some tape around your mat. And this is after you've cleaned your mat and dried it. And then you're going to Restick it. So you put a little tape around the edges so that the the resticking doesn't get, you know, in off on the side. So it doesn't ooze off to the side. All right. So to clean your mat, you're going to take warm water and Dawn dishwashing liquid. That's what I use. I mean, you can use other dishwashing liquids. Okay. So warm warm sudsy water, and you clean your mat. You need to do this every couple weeks or so because the mat has a lot of fibers from the papers. And while I'm cleaning with warm soapy water, I'm scraping. This is a scraper. It's just a Pampered Chef uh, stone scraper, like that. Okay, if you want, if you wanna go hardcore and you really need to get the adhesive off, you can use Goo Off or Goo Gone to get the adhesive off. And you can use what's called, this is something I got from the UK and they do ship worldwide. This is the adhesive. This works like two-way glue, but they have a magic mat cleaner. Okay, I'll have links to this. I'm not an affiliate with them or anything. I just found this cool product. People were talking about it online. And I was able to, you know, clean my mats that way. So goo, goo gone, goo off, magic mat cleaner, or just good old Dawn soap and water. You've cleaned it off, you let it dry. So mine's dry and it's clean. Now I'm going to use what's called two-way glue. This is two-way glue by Zig. So this is what I use 90% of the time to restick my mat. Even though I have sticky mat adhesive, I don't use this very often. I don't use it as much because it's more expensive than, you know. So the two-way glue is going to dry clear. I'm only doing this little corner for you just to show you how it works. So I put the two-way glue down and I add a little bit of water. Not much water. You'll see. Like that. Couple drops. See? Couple drops of water. And then I just take my little sponge and I sort of mix it all in there. 
and spread it all out. Now, it doesn't really work that well with the sponge, so I end up using my fingers. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and use my fingers. And it'll dry clear. So I'm going to put the lid back on. And, or actually just get a sponge here. Because I have a sponge, I'm just going to go ahead and use a sponge. I'm using a piece of my magic eraser. Just to show you. I don't want it to, but it's absorbing all my glue. But you know what I mean. You can get a sponge and move it around. But I really just would normally use, just use my fingers, but I don't want anybody to have anything else happen. Our fingers are pretty rubbed raw right now. I know mine are from all the hand washing I'm doing. So we're not going to mess with that using our fingers. Do that to the whole thing. It's going to look blue. You're going to know you've covered it up when it's all blue. And then it's going to dry clear. Okay? And it takes a couple hours to dry. And when it does, voila. Hear that sound? That's what you're supposed to get. It's going to be sticky. Then you remove this and you're good to go. Okay? So you can use lots of things to get that goo off. But you don't need to take the goo off every time. That's just if you want to take the goo off. I don't use the... I don't actually take my goo off every time. I just wash it to get the fibers off. All right, so now what I want to do next is show you. So I talked about storing it, and one thing I wanted to cover was how to repair how to repair your mats. And I'm going to see if I have any of these have holes in them here. This one had some holes in it. Okay, so this is how you repair your mats. So for to repair your mats, you're going to need painter's tape. I recommend the thick painter's tape for repairing the mats, not the thin one, but because it just makes a big smoother piece down there, and or the duct tape. Okay, so you, you have a rip in your mat. Do not panic. Don't complain. Don't whine that you cut through your mat with the wrong blade depth. I mean, you can whine. We can all whine if you want. But what I'm saying is just fix it. I have some here I fixed with duct tape too. I want to show you. Here. Okay, I've been using this one for years. And it has duct tape on the bottom. Okay, so that's it. To repair your mat, I'm letting this one dry. I'm gonna have to make some more room on my table before the next part, but I probably have about 40 mats. Just so you know, in case you're wondering, Paper Chef has gone through 40 mats. I'm still using them all. I've only had to throw away one or two that were cut up so bad. And that's because what happened is they were cut up so bad that I I left them cutting and I walked away and uh, I didn't know that the blade depth was too high and I I came back and next thing you know, my whole my whole mat had holes in it everywhere. I pull off a piece of duct tape. So say there's a big, say there's a, you know, you've sliced through your mat. You've used the wrong blade depth or, or even an auto blade and it sliced through. You go like that. That's how to repair your mat. Put a piece of duct tape on the back. It's fine. Once in a while though, the blade can get caught in that hole again. So just keep on making sure you fill that with glue and like make sure you smooth that out on the other side because you don't want the blade to get caught in that hole. I try to tend to I avoid the hole as well. There's not really a hole there, but I try to avoid right where there is a hole and like, try to cut on other parts of the mat. You know, so it doesn't, the blade doesn't get caught in there. But that's it. That's it, how to repair the mat. I'm going to pull that back off. Okay, so I have about 40 mats. I restick them all the time. I've only had to throw away one or two. It's no big deal. Um, which mat do you get with each machine? You have to make sure you get the right kind of mat. I, I also get asked a lot, what kind of mat? I use standard tack adhesive mat. It doesn't matter if you get low tack, they all become low tack eventually. I mean, let's face it, their mats are not great stick anyway. It doesn't matter if you get high tack, they're not that much higher than the standard tack and then you'll be too tacky at the beginning. So I just tend to get standard tack mats for the SDX machines. And then I get standard tack, you get, I get middle tack mats. This is, the, this is the CM model. They're a little bit smaller, see? The SDX model has a hole there and this one does not have a hole in it. The thing I like about the CM mats, middle tack or you can get low tack. I don't really get high tack either for that. So get middle tack or low tack. This is low tack. And they're a little bit shorter. What, what I like about the CM mats is that you can load them from either direction. The arrow is like loads from either direction. And, and with the SDX mats, they don't. And sometimes I do have mat loading issues. And what I do is I get my magic eraser. This is what I do when I have mat loading issues. With any kind of mat, I just tend to get, see these black spots up here? It sort of messes up things, all these extra black spots. So I try to, I take my magic eraser while it's dry and I clean the tops of these. I'm almost tempted, but I've never done it, to use sandpaper up there because I think maybe I was thinking maybe it would help this grip onto those rollers, but I don't. I don't want to mess up my mat, so I don't use sandpaper, but 
I use my magic eraser and I get rid of any of those extra black marks and it usually starts loading properly again. And also, if I have problems loading and I finally get it to load right, I just leave it loaded because I'm like, yay, hallelujah. And I leave it loaded and I leave it loaded like all day and do my cuts. All right, let me clear the room, not the room, let me clear the table. And what I'm going to do next is show you scanning, cutting, position adjustment, how to align your blade using your CM350 and your STX. Then we'll wrap up our troubleshooting and maintenance video. Now I'm going to show you how to align your blade on the scan and cut. You need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock that's pure white. I'm using Whisper White cardstock by Stampin' Up, a 12 by 12 piece. It, it really doesn't have to be like a whole 12 inches down, but it definitely has to be 12 inches across because of where it's getting cut and scanned. Okay, I'm putting it down. I'm rubbing it down. My mat's pretty sticky. I'm gonna load the mat. Oh, actually, don't load the mat yet. Let's do this. Let's, let's just show you all the steps. It's ready to be loaded, but let's do all the steps. So you're, you have your, your machine. You, have, you turn on your machine and you see this little button with the settings. Okay, so that's what you need to turn on. This is your CM machines. CM models, click on the little one with the wrench and you're gonna scroll down. I don't know if I can find a stylus handy. Let's see if I can. All right, so we're gonna scroll down. And we're scrolling down to page four of eight. Okay, so this is on your machine, it's on page four of eight. Scanning, cutting, position, adjustment. That's how you align your machine. I'll explain why you would need to do that in a minute. So it's gonna say, the, it's going to, the carriage and mat will move to the initial position. So you, you may as well not, you know, you didn't need to load your mat at that point. Now you need to load the mat because sometimes it just spits out your mat. So now I'm gonna load my mat. So I'm gonna click on this button here. I'm gonna load my mat and I have it set to a blade depth of four. Oh great, it's not being recognized. Let's see, oh, you know why? <laughs> That's pretty funny. I just put the SDX mat into a CM machine. See what happens when I try to do all things for all people? Let's, <laughs> I was trying to cover this something for everybody in this video because to make a second video would have taken me forever. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting, I'm just gonna put this piece of Whisper White down onto the right kind of mat. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the CM mat. Okay, there's no hole in the mat. <laughs> anyway, let's put that in there. I was like, how can it not be recognized? I just cleaned it. All right, let's click. All right, so now we're gonna say uh, start. We're gonna say start, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna cut like, it's gonna put some little crosshairs in there for us. Let me zoom back out so you can see it a little better. See how it's, it's going down? It's putting, it put like little crosshairs. You can't really see the crosshairs, but it put little crosshairs down there, and then it put some down there, and now it's drawing a line across the top. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna scan in that line. Okay, that's what it's gonna do or the double lines. And then it's gonna tell, we're gonna get to adjust whether, we're gonna tell it whether it's adjusted. All right, it's pretty good. So let me zoom in and show you what's going on. What I really love about the CM machines, I have to admit, is this ability to adjust your machine precisely. So it wants to know, is it, is it adjusted? Is this dot in the middle of the crosshairs? Not quite, see? So I can go like this. Yeah, maybe just a tiny bit. No, it was fine. I only needed to move it a couple pixels, but that's how you move it with these little arrows. Maybe back. It wasn't that bad, so I'll, I'll just leave it. Hmm, maybe like that. Okay, so next. Now that one's off. That side's off. But see, I get to move it, though. See? I get to move it to where it needs to go, and I can say okay. Now, what will that help me do? And you can do this over and over again until you get the perfect setting for cutting your images. Here's what I wanted to show you, a practical example of this. The last tutorial I did was on this Back on Your Feet stamp set by Stampin' Up. We cut out stamped images. And I was telling you that not all my images were coming out with the right amount of white space around them. These are actually aligned pretty well, but here, here's one that is and here's one that isn't. Let's see. Here's a giraffe that's aligned pretty well, meaning there's a right amount of white space around it, the outside of the giraffe. I shouldn't store so much in this case. But this little sloth, you see how there's not as much white space on the top as there is on the bottom. So, and even this little, this little turtle's not aligned. There's more white space on the side of the turtle than there is on the top. But then the draft, by that time I sort of fixed it. So you want this, you want the same amount of white space around the whole image 
okay so that's why you want to align your machine so you might have to do this a few times to get it really aligned but that's the concept that's what the scanning cutting position adjustment is doing it's helping you align your machine all right so let's do this let's unload let's just say it was all perfect okay and you you got to align it now i'm going to show you what happened to this paper so you can see this let me turn on the light a little bit see see how it did the the um you needed whisper white cardstock it drew it drew a little crosshair and then it, it went across and then it, it cut another little crosshair that's what it was doing okay see how that was doing that's how it aligned the machine let me move this machine and bring over my sdx and what i want to show you is how this one does it automatically for you the stx model it does it automatically and i did have everything unplugged because i was cleaning we were spring cleaning so let's finally find the end of the plug so i will have to make you wait a second because we don't want to have to edit the video too much so i'm going to turn that on and i'm going to get to the i've already have the whisper white loaded onto this paper and remember we can only load it in this direction so so anyway that's why you would need to align it is when you're when you're trying to get an even amount of white space but what let me get back to what i was talking about this this machine here the sdx aligns it automatically you can't move the crosshairs you're going to see what i mean so let's go let's go home when we turn on the machine we go click on home and we click on this little wrench okay you click on the wrench let's zoom in let's see that and you're going to go down to scanning cutting position adjustment we don't have page numbers like we do on the cm so let's just it's on this little section here right it's after the opening screen just say scanning cutting position adjustment the carriage and mat will move to the initial position so now we're going to load our mat and it should load nice because i just cleaned my mat and i've cleaned the top of my mat with the magic eraser please load correctly and it did and now i'm going to say start i'm going to click start so my mat loaded and click start and now it's going to do the scanning cutting position adjustment and you'll see how this differs from the cm the way the cm does it Okay, so again, the 12 by 12, you need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock, white cardstock. You can get it from Stampin' Up, you can get it at a craft store. Well, not any, right now the craft stores are pretty much closed, so you might need to order it online. We do, our online store in the US is working just fine in Stampin' Up. Okay, so it, it's now creating crosshairs. That's what it's doing, and it's now going to scan in those crosshairs and see and you're going to be able to tell it if it's aligned. But unlike the CM, you can't fix it. If it's not aligned, you just have to say no and keep trying again. In other words, you can't you can't fix it. It's either it either you either say yes or no. They're your only choices. Okay? These are the only choices, yes or no. So it's either in the crosshairs or it's not. And I would say no. It's not really. But if it was, you would say yes and it would save your setting. But I'm gonna to have to go back and do this a few more times. It takes me a few times to get it just quite right. This is what I mean by no. Let me get a sticky note. Okay. Well, it's not so bad, is it? All right, I can say yes. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. But it, but it's it's like if, if it was, you could say yes or no, but you can't align it yourself. What I, what I wish you could, I wish they would do a software update where I could push the little arrows to exactly where I want them to. Okay. So that's it. You just say yes. And if not, you say no. And you just keep doing that again and again and again and again and again and again. Sometimes it takes me 10 tries before I get my alignment right. But once I get it right, it's beautiful. It cuts out beautiful, beautiful images. All right. So that's how you do it. And let me show you what the paper looked like for this one. It didn't cut the whole line across. Across. Oh, I love the sound of the sticky mat. It only cut the crosshairs and the SDX over there and there. All right. So let's recap. We said we were going to learn how to clean your machine and the scanning plate. We did that. You used Huggies wipes. You used Windex wipes. And you used a magic eraser, which is super magic, okay? I will have links to all these. Then after that, we, we, I said you would learn how to clean your blade holder and sharpen your blade, and we did that. We took out the blade holder and we cleaned it using the q-tips q-tips and we used aluminum foil 
We made a ball of foil. You can use it a hundred times. So we use foil. Okay. Then we said we were going to learn how to restick the mats. And I kind of covered a lot in that section, but I just want to tell you what I normally do. 90% of the time I use two way glue because it's cheap. It's easy. And that's just how I roll. I try to go with, I do this so much. I use this so much. That's what I use. Two way glue, zig two way glue. But you can use other types of things to get the adhesive off. You can use magic mat, mat cleaner. You can use goo gone or goo off to get the goo off the mat. And you can use Dawn dishwashing liquid and just what I use most of the time. Dawn watch dishwashing liquid and warm water. And then to restick your mat, you can use any number of two way adhesives, like I said here, two way adhesives like this one here, the sticky mat adhesive. I'll have links to this. And then I talked about repairing your mat. And I talked about the duct tape and painter's tape to repair your mats on the bottom. And I don't repair them on the top, I just repair them only on the bottom. And then we talked about aligning the mat. In that case, you needed a piece of whisper white cardstock like this. Okay, so those are the materials you need. And I hope you understand how to do all these things now. And I hope you'll go spring clean with your machine and make it tuned up nicely so you can create some cards and brighten people's days with your crafts. Thank you. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Bye.